This week's episode of Bariatric TV is sponsored by Bariatric Advantage, the most complete line of micronutrient replacements specifically designed for the weight loss surgery patient. Help support the show by ordering your Bariatric Advantage products directly from the BTV eStore. Hi, I'm Tony. And I'm Linda. We're both here now. Things feel right with the world again. So what do we have for them this week? And I freaking did it with the deadliest catch. Obsess on numbers much? There's more reasons for obesity than eating too much. And we're surrounded by sandwiches. So let's get a move on. Vacation time is over. This week's I Freaking Did It is Debbie, otherwise known as your WL Buddy. Debbie wrote, the episode on summer vacation got me thinking about the stuff I was able to do this year that I wouldn't have been able to do 180 pounds ago. My husband and I went to Dutch Harbor, Alaska, where the deadliest catch is filmed, and did some hiking. I took my suit and went swimming in the community pool. Debbie, great job on the hiking and swimming. Now let's hike on into the dumping ground. I really liked that push. I am proud of myself. He's proud of his push. Everybody, let's give Mike a hand for his push. I don't feel good. Welcome to the dumping ground. 350, 300, 250, 200, 199, 150. 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. So what the heck are we doing? We're concentrating on numbers. Why? I don't know, probably because for so long, that's what we had to concentrate on. The number of pounds to lose. The number of clothing sizes. How many grams of protein I need to get in. How many ounces of water to drink. After a while, it can get a little overwhelming watching all these numbers. So, what to do about it? Well, instead of numbers, how about focusing on some other things that make you feel good? Like your medical marijuana card. Huddle me some bra. You mean like not being stared at anymore when walking into a restaurant? I'm stared at, I'm fabulous. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm always stared at, look at me. In one of our recent online chats, we sort of made up a list of things besides numbers that we could focus on. Like fitting into any chair, any chair at all. Climbing a flight of stairs without getting winded. Having a child or a grandchild share a love seat or recliner with you. Being able to go to the mall and realizing that you can shop at more than one store. Being able to ride a bike. Being able to walk, period. No fear of dying of a heart attack or stroke at any moment. Being able to give up your insulin really soon after surgery. Being able to buy a scale that's not from a specialty store. Being able to buy lunch for under five bucks. Being able to say, no, thank you, when offering, when offering yourself some sugary sweets. Hi, Linda, would you like a cookie? No, thank you, self, I don't want a cookie. Being able to say, no, thank you, when offered some sugary sweets. Fitting into a booth at a restaurant. Not having to turn sideways when entering a turnstile. Being able to fit into a turnstile. See, there's lots of other positive things to look at when the whole numbers thing starts to wear on you. We aren't saying give up the numbers, we're just saying that once in a while, you just need to take a break and focus on the real tangible things that surgery has given you. You'll feel better for it. Now that we've dumped that on you, let's go alter your reality. Come on. Welcome to Altered Reality. Serious topic here, folks. Be forewarned. One of the most important components of being a successful WLSer is coming to terms with why you were obese in the first place. It's all over the news right now that obesity in America is more of a health issue than it's ever been. And thanks in part to the First Lady, it's finally being brought to the forefront. There are many, many reasons why people become obese. There is, of course, the popular belief that we just lack self-control and discipline. It's easy to place the blame there, but I'll bet there's a few other reasons why we, as a society, have become more and more obese. One of the most major causes has to do with the decrease in activity found in all age levels. The simple fact is that although we lead busy lives, those lives might lack physical activity. Unlike previous generations, we aren't working outdoors on the farm or building things or even letting our children play outdoors. Instead, we're in front of computers, at desks in school, driving everywhere, and sitting in front of the TV for our news, information, and entertainment. As a result, we don't burn as many calories or build muscles like we used to. At the same time, we're eating larger portions of more fatty processed foods and less of the healthier stuff. 
Why? Because frankly, the healthier stuff has become more expensive. However, not everyone who is obese got that way by eating too much or doing too little. Genetic plays a part too. Suck coming in at the bottom of the gene pool. And let's not forget certain medical conditions that can lead to obesity. Things like hypothyroidism. It can cause the body to interfere with the proper absorption of nutrients, which can lead to packing on the pounds. Some mental illnesses like depression or anxiety can lead to obesity as well. If you're suffering from either of these, counseling can be a successful form of treatment. You may find it also makes a difference in your weight. Did you know that many eating disorders like overeating are caused by sexual violence? It's estimated that almost 30 to 40 percent of those with eating disorders are survivors of sexual trauma. For many of these survivors, developing an eating disorder can help them avoid or hide from their sexuality. Some may start viewing their bodies as a source of shame, anger, or frustration. Their overeating can be a form of self-punishment. The reason we bring this up is that it's very important for you to realize the reason you became obese in the first place. We've said it before that surgery is just a tool. Getting to know the reasons behind your obesity will help you utilize that tool to its fullest. Realizing that it's just not eating too much can go a long way in helping you on your journey. It can also alleviate some of the, I did this to myself, guilt. There are so many factors that lead to obesity. Understanding what yours are will help you to freak on. I present to you Sir John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Thank you, thank you, my loyal subjects. Meat on a plate? Bring me some bread I've inventing to do. As you wish, sire. Right. Let's see. Take this, put it on there. A little bit of this. And there we go. And I shall narcissistically name this the sandwich. And this bread will be so thick and gooey that you freaks will never, ever enjoy it! <laughs> Hold it right there, Montague. Uh, yes? Ever heard of an Oro Wheat Sandwich, then? No! That's right, freaks. Despite the best efforts of the Earl of Sandwich, you can still enjoy his creation. Really? You can eat a sandwich? Well, I'll admit for the longest time after surgery, I could only eat the guts out of a sandwich. After lunch, my plate looked like there was an explosion on it, but not anymore, thanks to these Earl Wheat Sandwich Thins. Best invention next to, um, sliced bread. Yep, only 100 calories, 2 grams of sugar, and even 4 grams of protein and they're light enough that they don't seem to gum up my pouch. You can find these little buggers at most local grocery stores. I even found them at Costco. Well, alrighty then. What kind of sandwiches can you make with them? Well, for starters, I love me a tuna melt. Just throw some tuna on it, a piece of cheddar cheese, and pop it in the microwave. And voila, a tuna melt. And while we're on the subject of hot sandwiches, how about a little ham, turkey, a little Swiss cheese, and a little sugar-free jelly? Grill it in a pan, sprayed with Pam, and you have yourself a Monte Cristo. You know, I have a friend that's the count of that place. How about a little hot pastrami? Add a little pastrami, some cheddar cheese, and some spicy mustard. And wow, I feel like I'm in a New York deli. New York? What the bloody hell's wrong with the old one? So what about a black? No. Never heard of it. How about some bacon, lettuce, a big slice of tomato, maybe throw in an avocado and you are rocking the black. Where's the lettuce? Where's the lettuce at, Tony? I forgot to buy the lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> nice job prop shopping, lady. See what we mean? You can make any type of sandwich you want, cold or hot. Hey, what about a hamburger? Could you make a hamburger with it? Definitely. Or for a little more healthier version, how about a turkey burger? Oh my god, this is so good. I like how you have just a touch of ketchup on the side of your mouth. <laughs> so, smells like that? <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. So, if you're like us and you missed having a sandwich, make yourself one. In fact, share your favorite sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Share your favorite sandwich with us over at our forum at bariatrictv.com. <laughs> <laughs> Forward slash, you're going to be so full of sandwich. 
you're like us, and you missed having a sandwich? Mmm, really good. I need this whole thing. In fact, share your favorite sandwich with us over at the forums at bariatrictv.com forward slash forum. <laughs> well, we did it. We survived the shooting of another show. Yep. And nobody, including Mike, was injured during the filming of this episode. Of course, we'll be back next week. But in the meantime, remember to submit your ideas for a name for our upcoming before and afters segment. Just email it to us at feedback at bariatrictv.com. And remember that the winner gets a $50 gift certificate for their favorite vitamins, as long as they're one of our sponsors. <laughs> See you next week. Mm, hamburgers. Mosquito. Did you get him? Yeah. <laughs> I did. Debbie wrote the episode on summer vacation got to be thinking about the stuff I was able to do this year that I wouldn't have been able to do. I feel like I'm in a New York deli. Except for I'm not getting beat up. <laughs> Yo, lady!